What's often said in some of the texts is that uh, data is ceaseless and unpredictable. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and it really is like that. Uh, as human beings, we just we experience the whole spectrum of um, you know, human experience. And um, really, um, uh, it's difficult to predict you know, what, what it's going to be like. Difficult is an understatement. <laughs> like even tomorrow, you know, what are we going to feel like? And um, one thing that I would say about uh, relying on the mainstays and becoming familiar with open intelligence is that um, we will face everything. <laughs> uh, that's, um, you know, the mainstays will push our buttons and um, and most of the time it won't even need to. <laughs> you know, we just have everything happening in our mind. Memories, worries about the future, hopes for the future, regrets about the past, happy about the past, whatever it might be. Everything comes up. And um, <clears throat> it's common to... Um, to do the training hoping that it will, uh, hoping that the result of the training is that we will escape from our afflictive states and um, in, a, in an innocent sort of um, unconscious way, um, many times this is the reason why we, <laughs> we want to participate and it doesn't matter how many times that we're told that this isn't what's going to happen, <laughs> we still hope that it that, well, they're just saying that because they're supposed to, but really it, that, is what, <laughs> that is what the result is going to be, so I'll stick around. But the problem with that is that um, when we then experience an afflictive state, we misunderstand that situation as being evidence of our failing or evidence of the mainstays failing or um, a setback or whatever we might think it is. But the correct understanding is that it's an incredible opportunity. Um, you know, everything in us just wants peace and love. That's all we want. And um, everything that arises in our mind, <coughs> uh, perhaps even most intensely, the afflictive states, it's like, okay, here I am then. And we go, no, no. We want peace and love, we want peace and love. And the afflictive state goes, here I am. And we go, no, no, we want, we want peace and love. It's like somebody handing you, you know, uh, 50 pounds and you just go and throw it in the drain. <laughs> That's often how we relate to our afflictive states. We don't want them, we want them to, we want the training to take us to, um, non-afflictive state world <laughs> but um, but that world doesn't exist <laughs> and uh, this training the, inter the the purpose of this training is to learn to live in this world this is the world that we want to live in and in this world we have to face everything right from birth life and through to death we have to face everything and the more we um, just see that clearly and um, and discover that we're willing to do that uh, and we're willing to train ourselves in that uh, the more um, uh, free of affliction we are even amidst affliction Affliction is, has two ingredients. One is something that's happening. The second is trying not to experience that thing that's happening. If you take one of those away, affliction doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's like a cake needs certain ingredients. If you miss one out, then it doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> affliction doesn't work if you don't give it these two things. One of them is happening anyway, the other one is our choice. <laughs> so in short moments this is what we're doing, is we're um, 
retraining ourselves. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's all it is. Like Arizal said, it's just, uh, it's nobody's fault. It's just, you know, that's how we've learned to relate with ourselves. So when people learn to just allow themselves to be as they are, then that in instinctive skill is just increasingly available. And um, hanging out with people for whom this is uh, clearer and clearer, and people for whom this is their life's aspiration, makes it so much easier to get familiar with it. Like I imagine myself trying to learn to ride my bike when I was six or whatever it was, um, having never seen a human being ride a bike before. <laughs> it wouldn't have even occurred to me to even try to learn because of course it's impossible to ride on the two wheel thing. Like you, that's not possible. But if you see a lot of people doing it everywhere, then kids who grow up are just like, oh, okay, well, I'll learn to ride a bike then. And then somebody helps them and they fall off here and there. But after a while, they don't even have to think about it. Your uh, body just adjusts by itself to each small thing that happens as you're riding your bike. And they're not thinking anymore, okay, so keep the wheel straight and keep my head like this and pedal my legs. And we don't think about that anymore. We just do it. <laughs> and um, when, we, you know, when we're with people in our lives who are living their life like this, just naturally, even without us understanding anything, it will just become our own experience. If I met myself six years ago when I first started and I sort of took myself under my wing, so to speak, <laughs> this would be one thing I would say to myself is just don't worry about anything. Just, <laughs> just you know, carry on as you are and just don't worry. Yeah, that's all I would say. And actually thinking back, that's more or less all my teacher ever said to me. <laughs> Yes, I know you're worried about blah, 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 but just it's fine and just carry on. <coughs> it'll come, it'll just come. Just like riding a bike did. And, um, you know, in a way, I was obsessive about needing to understand it. Like, I was completely bent on needing to understand open intelligence and how the process works and how am I to apply myself to the process. <laughs> uh, now, uh, you know, finally I can look back and see that it was completely unnecessary to try to understand it all the time because any true understanding that I gained I gained through experience, not through trying to understand. <laughs> and so if there's, if there's clear understanding of the teaching, there's clear understanding of the teaching. If there's no understanding of the teaching, there's no understanding of the teaching. And both of those situations are nature's intelligence unfolding in you. <laughs> and that's what we have to learn to trust, nature's intelligence open intelligence that subsumes all of our experience.